Hey, what's up, everybody? David Wood here for DavidWoodFX.blogspot.com, and welcome to a very exciting GIMP tutorial. In today's tutorial, we are going to be creating some fireball effects using stock photos that we can get online. Here's a preview of what some of these look like. Uh, this is the original example. It comes out uh, like a sun effect. And then there's more a traditional, like a fireball that one would make in a movie. And a couple examples of what that actually looks like in a picture. These are are just quick examples that I threw together. Not the best at all, but uh, you get the basic idea. So we can go ahead and start making these. Uh, so I have GIMP open. Um, I'm just going to be using a template size of 640 by 400 and fill the background in with black. And now we'll go get our stock images. Um, great places to find those are cgtextures.com. They've got a great selection of fire images. And also deviantart.com under the resources. They've got a lot of great photos on there as well. Uh, we're just going to be using the ones from CG Textures. And uh, I've already got them downloaded. But the first thing, the first one that you'll want is uh, this one right here. Uh, once you sign up for a membership account, there's uh, several different uh, images in this collection here. But this one and then you're going to want to grab uh, this one here and finally this fireball effect ish one right there and uh, once you have those downloaded you can go ahead and uh, load them into GIMP I'm just going to load the first one into GIMP and here we see our flames and uh, I just gotta scale this down so that will fit into our image. And the next thing to do is go to Filters, Distorts, Polar Coordinates. And Polar Coordinates will take the ends of it and warp them around and connect them. And uh, you can see in this case it makes it a circle. Uh, we want to uncheck the map from top box because otherwise the uh, flames will show up on the inside. So uncheck that hit OK. And already you can see the base of our effect. It looks pretty good. Um, right there you can see the seam of the other image. So what we'll do is duplicate this layer, set the second one's blend mode on lighten only, and grab the rotation tool and just rotate that around uh, about 180 degrees and that will help hide the edge. And you can move that around and then just take a soft edged brush and painting with black just erase the other side of that so we don't have a mirroring effect going on uh, we just want these flames to be on part of the image just to cover up that seam better that looks pretty good next what we want to do is fill this in so we are going to grab a uh, the uh, fireball image as I like to call it this one right here we'll load that into GIMP and this is pretty large so grab the scale tool again and scale it down and fit it inside the canvas and we're going to go to filters distorts lens distortion lens distortion is a filter for correcting the warping that appears from a fisheye camera lens or a wide angle camera lens where the middle of the image bulges outward but it can also exaggerate the effect and we're going to use that to our advantage so in here we'll set the main to 100 percent the edge to 100 percent and the zone, the zoom, we will set that to 50%. And hit OK. And you can see it kind of bulged it out already. And go to Filters, Reshow Lens Distortion. And we're going to run this filter again, but this time remove the zoom and set that at 0. And hit OK. And you can see it already kind of made uh, some changes there. And all we have to do is hit Control F, and it will re repeat the last used filter. So uh, we'll hit that uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, uh, eight times, and that should round it out pretty well. And set the blend mode of this to light and only, and then we can center this into our image, and then just make a duplicate of it and rotate it, and just uh, fill up the inside of our fireball. Something like that looks pretty good. Uh, you can see the mirroring that's going on from these two layers. We will hide that in a minute. But just fill up the middle so there aren't any solid black spots showing through. 
and uh, then we can load our final image and uh, the, that is this one it's sort of a pretty low fire effect I guess you could say it doesn't uh, it's not very high flames coming off of it uh, pretty simple and we will run the same filter first we will rotate it though layer transform rotate 90 degrees clockwise and if we want we could scale it down and just make this a little square -er. so that looks pretty good and then we'll do the same thing with the lens distortion first set the zoom to 50 and then remove the effect and hit control F a couple of times set the blend mode of this to lighten only and we will center that up and scale it down and place that in the middle and that will just hide the mirroring that goes on from the other layers and so far this is looking pretty good a few things to touch up though is the fire does not all match in color uh, the out outer flames here are much uh, softer orangish red instead of the hot yellow orange that we expect from a fireball like these middle layers here so we can take these layers and color correct them so go to colors color balance and in here uh, in the midtone set the first slider to 100 set the bottom slider to a negative 100 and the middle slider we are going to set that at about 50 and this uh, the middle slider really controls just how yellow the image comes out so uh, 50 or 40 should look pretty good you can try unchecking the preserve luminosity setting in this case it kinda ruins it so we'll leave that checked and hit OK and then just apply the exact same filter to the second flame layer and it should be the last preset that you just used hit OK again and that is looking pretty good um, if we turned off these flame layers the outer flame layers we can see just the uh, initial center image and that is how we would go creating more of the traditional fireball effect um, but uh, that is not what we're going for we're going for more of this a more wild flame effect. So once we have all those done, we'll go to layer, new from visible, and this will just merge all the layers into a new layer. And then we'll duplicate this layer, go to filters, blur, Gaussian blur. And in here we want to set the Gaussian blur to around 50. Hit OK. And then duplicate the layer, go back to Gaussian blur, and this time give it a blur of about 200. and set the blend mode of this layer to screen and uh, we can see the two layers interacting there uh, we'll place the uh, second layer on top we'll set the one with the Gaussian blur of 50 we'll set that one on top set the blend mode of that to screen and then just lower the opacity of that to around 50 or 60 and then merge those two layers together and set the blend mode on screen and that will just give it a overall glow. One thing you can see though is there's this really goofy ring appearing around the outside of it and that is because the outside flame layers here they don't have a solid black background. There's a red tint to it so when we add the glow to it that really makes it much more visible. So uh, making sure that we have the glow layer on we'll select the other layer with all the effects merged on it and we'll go to colors levels and in the levels we want to grab the black slider and just boost that up to uh, around 10 or 15 uh, 10 works pretty good in this case uh, maybe even a little lower I'm gonna go with 7 and our fireball is almost done we just need to add a hot spot to the middle so we'll create a new layer and fill it with black and set the blend mode on screen and zoom into the middle and grab a soft edged brush with the color of white and just click in the middle and uh, maybe click a couple times and we can grab the 
rectangular select tool and draw a selection around the circle and go to filters, distorts, eye warp. And in eye warp we want to use a deform radius of around 10 and uh, with the option of move we just want to kind of stroke out in different directions like this and uh, just mess around with it so it's not a perfect circle but it's just kind of a crazy look and effect to it and hit OK and that's a little bit big select none uh, we can go to colors color balance and we'll set the settings to the first slider to 100 percent bottom slider to negative 100 and we can set the middle slider um, probably to around negative 20 or 30 and then the blend mode on screen or we can try blurring this layer a little bit more about 12 and then adding the color correction again and maybe trying it, setting it on add. This is a lot of uh, just uh, experimentation to see what looks best. I'm just going to uh, undo the Gaussian blur and leave the blend mode on screen and just scale this down a little bit. And place it back in the center. And you can always take that layer and just uh, eye warp it some more. Or you can make a duplicate of it and blur this duplicate layer by about 20. And then on this one, apply the color balance effect as well. And then set the blend mode to add. And maybe blur it some more. And just kind of give it an overall glow in the middle. And that is all there is to that effect. Now once you're done with that, just hit layer new from visible and again it will create a new layer based on all the other layers so I hope you guys found this tutorial useful and you can use it in your projects if you make an image using this effect please send me a message on YouTube or at my email account at davidwoodfx at gmail.com and uh, I'll check it out and tell you what I think of it it's always nice to see uh, people actually find a use for my tutorials also you can download the project file at projectfx.exofire.net. The link will be in the description so you can see uh, what I did with the other example images. And in case you wanted to make it look like you were throwing a fireball at somebody, I have a tutorial called Create Star Bolts or Energy Balls in GIMP. And this uses displacement maps to create this tail uh, behind the main energy ball, or in your case, the fireball. So uh, you can check that out. The link will be in the description. And then add some flame elements into the tail as well. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you liked it, hit subscribe, and I will see you guys next time.